Assalamu alaikum bokay welcome back to the Jolla Football Banter by YouTube channel this is your boy Chama and this is the midweek recap of Gambia foreign based players this midweek not a lot of players were involved in action but there was a lot of um stuff going on uh, especially in terms of transfer because it was the um, end of January which means it's the end of the um, January transfer window and uh, a lot of Gambian players were also, uh, you know, involved in, in, in making moves from one club to another. So we will discuss about these moves. Some of there are some 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 so, so, some interesting ones there, and um, you know, we will we will try to discuss them, try to summarize it for you guys. What really transpired over the course of midweek, the players that make moves, and also there were some 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 few one or two players who were involved in action. So we will look at the performance. There was one particular um, Zakaria Sao who was exceptional for his club last week. We mentioned him for the first time um, on this program. I mean. And um, this week he went on and do something amazing. So we will get into that. Um, so, but before we start, guys, please, um, if you enjoy what we do on the Jello Football Bantu by YouTube channel, please consider, you know, hitting that subscribe button. And if you enjoy the videos that we do and the work that we are doing, um, please give us a thumbs up, give, give us a like. These are the little, little things that you can help this channel grow and then move to the next level. Like, like Coach I use what he say, like the more numbers we have, you know, the more like motivated we are and then the better content that we will bring for you guys. So without further ado, guys, let's get right into the discussion for today. So where we start, where else do we start? We start with Zakaria Sawa, of course, I mentioned him earlier, but we have to start with him um he plays for uh, aris limosol in in check in um cyprus and um this week again um last week like i say uh when mr jubate came to me told me about we should be covering his 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 progression and stuff like that i think he came at the perfect perfectly right time because since he came and told me that the boy cannot stop scoring goals to be honest um this midweek they played on on um on wednesday and uh he came off the bench they were drawing zero zero and then came off the bench and scored a hat trick they won the game four zero he scored three goals and then assisted the other one so that was a, a super sub moment from from him um and over the past three games that he has played um, that was the time that Jabate, you know, mentioned him to me to, to to be covering him. Not that we were not looking at him or we are not covering him in the past. Um, we wrote stuff about him in our in our page before, but we really did not, you know, follow his progress on his club. And he was not, to be honest, he was not playing as regular as as possible. Even with the form he is on right now, um, you would think that he is starting every single game. But in the last three games, he came off the bench in every single game, and then he scored in every single one of them. So he scored, um, came in, coming off the bench 19 minutes and then followed that one, come off the bench last weekend, scored again. And this time again, um, they were drawing 0-0. The coach, you know, called him into action at halftime and then he came on and scored a, a brilliant hat trick, um, like pace, power. And then the final one was a good, good final goal. He scored was a penalty and then he laid off a very, very good assist for his teammate to score the third goal. So like that was that was a, a, a brilliant moment for him. Um, and surprisingly, surprisingly for me, that those are his first goals for his for this club. So um, maybe that was the reason why we are not really covering him um, because there was not much impact from him um, in terms of uh, what he was doing for his club. So, but now we have to take notice of that. And the coach himself has to take notice of that. You cannot bring a player three consecutive games um, off the bench and then the player um, scoring for you, um, winning goals, winning games for you. And that includes a hat trick, five goals um, and one assist in the three games he played. If you combine the you know, number of minutes he played in these three games, it's just 78 minutes, by the way. And then he scored five goals and created one assist. So if you look at that into numbers terms, it's like every 13 minutes of a game, um, he is contributing a goal, a goal or an assist. So he has contributed. Uh, so with that form, I don't think the coach can bench him. And Aris is a, is a very good club, by the way. Um, they are a very good club in, from in, in Cyprus. They go to the European European Conference League. They go to the Europa League. They were they are the defending champions of the of the of the Cyprus League, by the way. So they have been in the European co co uh, competitions this season as well. Zakaria joined them earlier this season, you know, and um, yeah. He, he is a Swedish-born, but 
He's 20, just 22 years old, but um, uh, he is open to representing the Gambia. The Gamfoot have posted that, you know, um, even Jobati has told me that. Um, yeah, I've never spoken to the, to the guy himself, but um, from, from sources, he is ready to represent Gambia. So if he can maintain this kind of form, of course, he's somebody we should, we should be looking at. Um, that was exceptional. Three goals, three brilliant goals. And I, I, I love the way he used his strength. I love the way he used his pace running behind defenses. And um, yeah, he's very clinical. The way he finished those chances, he looked like a very clinical attacking player. Um, that is Zakaria Sauer, guys. And um, another player who was also in action during the midweek was Ali Fadera. I think those are the only two games that I really saw. Um, most of the other games were friendly games. Fadera started again. Um, we remember he started in last week and then got an assist. Uh, he started the game, but they lost this time 2-1 um, uh, to Lilburn. And uh, yeah, Ali Fadera played about 72 minutes of that game. Yeah, those are the two players to cover when it comes to performance. So we can just move right into the transfers and then look at the players who are making moves from, you know, from clubs. Um, we can start in 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 um in Sweden. Uh, Mayalbi, Mayalbi just signed a player, uh, Abdullah Mane, Abdullah Mane from Wildan. He was there on on trial. The 19 year old Gambian uh, was there on trial. He scored a, a good goal on trial. That was a free kick. He hit the free kick, hit the wall, and then from the rebound, he just you know, um you know, placed the ball very well into the top top right corner. Uh, yeah. He signed a three and a half years deal, uh, as Buba Yalo Falaboy, my brother, reported. He signed um, the three and a half years deal with Mayalbi, who will be starting their season. They are now currently in pre-season. They will start their season soon. Hopefully, you know, he can have a good impact there. Um, and, you know, him leaving Walidan is kind of, um, I would touch that one a little bit, because Walidan right now, they are struggling in the Gambian League because he's their main man. And then he left earlier in the season to go and do his trials. And then finally, he got a contract, which, of course, that is what we want to see our Gambian players do but then he has left a huge huge gap at wild down right now wild down and i uh, uh, rock bottom in the in the in the jf league they only have one win um they are losing every single almost every other game like yeah they are on just on six points one win three draws in um in tw in 11 games or 12 games yeah 11 games played which is not good enough for like i know they lost seven games already that is 12 games in the league so why then they're not having the the the, the, the greatest time of, of their time of the and yeah there's the fear that they could even drop into the second division of the gambian league right now um yeah why then? Yeah, it's a it's a worrying thing because they are the most successful club in the Gambia <laughs> and stuff like that. Of course, I'm not covering the Gambia 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 League, which we always we usually do during midweek. Coach usually cover that aspect. Um, yeah, but yeah, good luck to Abdullah Mane with his move in 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 in, in Sweden. Hopefully, we will keep in tabs on him with Mayalbi and see how well he progresses. He was a very good player for them. I, yeah, many people used to speak about him and his potential and stuff like that. So let's see how he develops into his new surrounding. And next we go to another interesting one, Adama Sidibe. Um, this is a name, to be honest, before today, I don't know Adama Sidibe. But kudos to my, and uh, big up to my brothers in the Scorpions TV. I saw them posted the guys, Adama Sidibe, moving from Warrington, Rayland to St. Johnston. St. Johnston, I know, is a Scottish league. It's a Scottish club. They play at the top tier of Scottish league. They are currently actually 10th in the Scottish league. So, and Warrington, they are from the 7th tier of English football, by the way. 7th tier of English football. And then he moved all the way to the Scottish Premiership. So, that gap to go all the way and then, you know, make that move is massive. So, that kind of made me to take notice. <laughs> and surprisingly, I follow him on Twitter. But I don't know how it came about that we are fo I'm following him on Twitter. Yeah, he moved from, from Warrington, Rayland to, to St. Johnston, by the way. Let's just focus on his, on, on his football. Yeah, which is a massive, massive, uh, massive, massive guy. He joined Warrington just recently. That was in the January, in, in the last summer window. Summer, summer window, that's when he joined Warrington. And then he has been exceptional for this club. In 2023, he's just he's 25 years old. Now he signed a 2.5 year deal with uh, St. Johnson in the Scottish Premier League. So then I had to do a research on him, obviously, and see why was he like. And then you go to the BBC, and then you see there's an article on him moving to you know there's a lot of like um, uh, articles about him moving to St. Johnson because the thing is. He St. Johnson was not the only club that was interested in Adam Asidibe. 
you know, is in Adama City. Like, if you, his, if you look at his profile, though, by the way, you will see his English. And, but of course, he's Gambian and English. If you go to his um, transfer mat um, information, he's Gambian and English. So, of course, my, my brothers at, at Scorpions TV, they know better. Um, yeah. But there were a lot of clubs interested in him. Salford, that is Ibu Touré's former club. They are playing in League Two. In League Two, that is the fourth tier of English football. So you can understand that gap. From seventh tier to fourth tier, you can understand. Port Vale, Blackpool, Blackpool, they used to be there also. So these clubs were following him. And then, you know, his, his, his club, Warrington, they turned down an offer from all these clubs. They turned down an offer. So usually you are in the seventh year turning down offers from clubs. So it must be a special player, especially at, at, that, at that level, of course, at that level we are talking about. Then you have to check what, what, has he, what has he done there. Then you look at his numbers. He has scored 15 goals so far this season in 11 games. And, and this includes a goal in the FA Cup for, for them. And then if you look at, if you hear about his qualities, if you hear coaches talk about him, it's about his pace, his strength, his finishing ability. So, yeah, pace and strength, pace and strength those are two very important components for a, for, for a player to have. And he has that in abundance according to, to what, I, what, 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 what I read. So, of course, I will, after a little, I will go and check his highlights and stuff like that to know, better, to know more about him. But, yeah, he made the move to the Scottish League. Now we have the chance to, to monitor him even more because he's now playing at the top tier of Scottish League. St. Johnston is not the biggest team in Scotland. But they are playing at the Scottish League, the top of the, the top tier of the Scottish League. They are currently in tenth place. So yeah, good luck to Adam Sidibe. Let's see how that one pan out. Let's see how that one develop. And next is uh, Ibo Adams. Ibo Adams he moved from Cardiff City to to Derby County. Um, I think it's a good move for him. That one is a very good move for him. He takes a, a season a, a, a loan. Um, it's a loan deal for the, until the end of the season. Um, Derby County, they are now in the League One. They are now in the third tier of English football. Um, Cardiff, of course, he's kind of taking a drop off from Cardiff. Cardiff, they are in the Championship, and then he dropped to the league to League One. But if you look at um, um, Derby, they are now trying to push to go get gain that promotion back to the back to champ back to the Championship. They are currently fourth in the table, just one point of automatic qualification to the um championship and even if they don't make it like they are in occupying the um the playoff spot so those so they have the opportunity to do the playoffs and then get promotion and Ibo Adam was struggling for minutes i think i have been saying that every single time he comes here and there are one minute cameo or sometimes if the coach want to rest his players or if you don't have if he has injured players that is the time he comes and play so since he got his injury he moved to cardiff at a like i think it was a very good time to move to cardiff but his injury kind of really really uh slow down his progress at cardiff and then like my other brother what's his name bax used to say since he went to Cardiff, because bax is from forest green rovers he he's kind of he it is his club and uh Ibu adams was playing there and what he said was um since Ibu adams moved to 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 cardiff cardiff has changed their manager three or four times and that was during the time that he was injured so if every coach when any coach that comes the coach who really signed him was out when he was like like he got injured immediately when he get there and then before he returned from injury the coach who signed him has already left so other coaches has come in so it was difficult for him to break through to other coaches because they already have their ideas and stuff like that and still that was that has been the problem even coming to the african cup of nation that was my worry for 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 Ibo adams his lack of minutes um because he's a player who who likes to run a lot who is a very who's a, who's a big athlete so if he's not playing regularly that kind of affects his game um yeah so this move is a very good one for him going to to derby county hopefully um there is some agreement with with him and derby county for him to get minutes there even though they are pushing for the promotion but yeah if you are taking a player from the championship and bringing him down to to to, to league one you you better be giving that player especially if he's a senior player uh so, so some minutes so that's what i would expect so good luck to Ibo adams on his move to that one another player who made a move is califa mane from perugia to Calcio for four year that is in Italy third division he moved that's a short, short time deep um for four 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 journalists I know these days he's very busy because when when it comes to transfers he's usually you know on top of everything so four four journalists he reported that one James Gomez also moved from Sparta Prague to Odense this one is quite interesting too um uh, James because if you look at James Gomez um I think this is a step down in his career. That's a step down in his career, but I think it's a necessary one as well. Similar to Ibu Ture, it's a necessary one because he moved to Sparta Prague. And that was a big move, by the way, because he sent for 
800,000 euros, 800,000 euros, that was rising to 1.3 million euros. That is a big sum of money for, for clubs in that part of the world. It's a big, big sum of money. Understand? Of course, if you, if you, if you are supporting uh, these big clubs in England, Europe, uh, or Spain, and Italy, and then you hear that number, you will not take it as a significant number, but you have to take it into context and consider it from the scope, where it is coming from. You consider it from the country that they were buying him from and the country that was selling him. You know, so that was a good amount of money to spend on a defender at that, at that, at that time. So, like, Sparta Prague expected big things from, from him because I was also following some of the Sparta Prague fans' pages. You know, like, they have their ultras, like, crazy fans. You know, they know everything about their club. They follow these players that they sign. So, I was monitoring what they were saying about James during that time and how they were assessing his performances and stuff like that. And um, they were pretty happy with him in the initial stages, you know, and uh, the qualities that he would bring. Even Rossiski, the, 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 the sporting director of, 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 of Sparta Prague, was very, very happy when he signed, when, when, when they signed James Gomez because the potential that, that he had. But it was very difficult for him to settle into that club. Um, in the end, he only played eight games, six games for them in the like for the senior team and the two games for for the B team. Um, and he only played one game in the European Europa League. That was against Rangers, by the way. He only played one half in that in that game. Um, so he struggled with, with the pace of the game there. And um, you know, even when he came to the national team, you know, people were worried. Despite him starting. All and playing 90 minutes in all the Gambia's games in the African Cup of Nations, he's not the James that we know from the last African Cup of Nations. He's you know, his form has dropped a little bit coming into this competition, even though he had a very good season with Horsens last season. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's difficult to say you have a very good season when your team ended up getting relegated, but he was a standout player for them, um, in that season last season. And then he, that's why he earned this move to Sparta Prague. Sparta Prague uh, wanted to, to buy him desperately. There were many clubs who were interested in him. There were clubs who reported from England and stuff like that. There were clubs that were interested in him from reports, at least from the reports that I saw. So, yeah, now going back to Denmark, it's a country that he knows. It's a country that he has spent, he has, like, he's appreciated more. And sometimes... Um, sometimes the, these, the, 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 these moves are not just meant to be. Sometimes the coach, what they expect from you and how, how soon they expect you to, to get into that form. Sometimes, you know, all these things can play a part. Um, so if you have n not so um, patient coach, sometimes, you know, they don't give time to these younger players to settle in, especially you are going to a different country. There is a lot of things involved. So it was unfortunate that it did not work out for him at Sparta Prague. But now, now he's back going to 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 to, to Denmark, but with a different club this time um, with Odense. And if you go to Odense, he has a his Gambian brother there, Alassane Jata. Uh, yeah, Alassane Mane, sorry, Alassane Mane playing at 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 at, at Odense. So that would be a, a a good match for him, and um, that would be a better place to settle for for him as as well. There are a lot of Gambian players, you know, in 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 in. Uh, in Denmark and even coaches like Matar Mbo, they are all there now. So yeah, hopefully um, he will, you know, regain his form that we know he can and the potential that we saw in him, that uh, Sparta Prague saw in him, Rossiski saw in him, all those things, he, he can bring that back. Um, of course, I know he was, uh, people were a little bit critical, critical of him. He had, he struggled in the African Cup of Nations, I will agree to that. But he is a massive, massive potential, and uh, if we, if he can get it right, like he is one, he he's he's the potential captain of Gambia national team. You know, James Gomez, he captained the under twenty and stuff like that. So we wish him all the best in the, in in Denmark, um, back in Denmark with Odens, where he know the people, where he know the league. So hopefully he can be, you know build up again and then you know try to take the next step as, as well. So good luck, good luck, James, on that move. And then the next one will be. Ibrahim Adabo, Ibrahim Adabo Samdoria, similar to James, he went to Lask, Lask in Austria, uh, on loan. Uh, it was a loan with an option to buy at the end of the loan deal from Roma. Like, so it was going to be a one-year loan until the end of 2024, and then there was an option to change that into a full contract. But midway through the loan, uh, Lask prematurely ended the loan. Uh, and like, this one is, it is baffling. It like, it's kind of baffled me a little bit because... I can't remember. Just before the African Cup of Nations, he returned back from injury. And when he returned back, that was the that was his best time at last because he was playing regularly. Ahead of the African Cup of Nations, he was playing. He started two or three games in a row for them. Understand? So with that, I was expecting, oh, okay, now he has cracked it. Now he has cracked it and now he's going to be in the team and then going forward. But uh, surprisingly, <laughs> after, after he go to the African Cup of Nations, started 
two games for the Gambia in the African Cup of Nations, despite not having the best Afcon. But he went to a competition play and then come back. Then last decided to cut short his loan deal and then send him back to Roma. And then from there, Roma sent him to Sampdoria on loan straight away. Yeah, that is surprising for me. Now, so that one is, is, is off now. So he's going to Sampdoria. Sampdoria, they are in the second division of the Italian league. Uh, we all know Sampdoria. Sampdoria, um, Omar Kohli used to play there. They got relegated last season after Omar Kohli left. They, they were struggling. They had a struggling season last season. So that's where he's going. He's going to play in Serie B. Um, yeah, so let's see how, how it goes for, for Ibi, Dabo. Ibi Dabo. He also needs minutes. And um, he's, he's also a talented player. His ACL injury or his knee injury that he had um, at Roma, I think kind of really, really set him back in terms of his career. So it, now he just needs somebody who will give him the opportunity and give him the minutes to build again and then find, regain that form that, that, you know, that, that, he, that he had before and the potential we know he has. So good luck, Ibi Dabo, in, in Lask. And then Ibrahim uh, Bubakar Tambedu, he moved from Paide to Hapoel Tel Aviv. That is moving from his Estonian club to, 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 to Israel. He signed a two and a half years deal there with the Israel club. Uh, yeah, he was he, he also had a very decent end of the season with Paide, scoring 14 goals in 36 matches in his overall time with, with Paide. Um, in the league, like, he won the league, the league cup with Paide. He also he was also sent on loan at some point to Serif in the Moldovan League where he won the cup and league and cup double. So yeah, he also needs to take those next steps. And um Hapoel Tel Aviv, not the best club in Israel. They are currently struggling on mid table or bottom of the table, bottom half of the table. Um so hopefully this 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 signing um can can you know can revitalize them and then you know they, they move them up. <laughs> Israel is an is an interesting place to go though. But yeah, good luck to, to Bubakar Tambedo on his move to, to Israel. Um another move that happened is uh Alasana Jata. Alasana Najata by book to to not not County. Not County is the second like league two, um in the fourth year of English football. Uh, where but a lot of Gambian players play there and I think it's a it's a very, very strong level. Um Jacob Mendy plays there. Ibutre plays there. Um Sidi can play Sidu can play there. Mo Fall plays there. You know, there are a lot of Gambian players. Ibu Adams when he was coming to the national team, he was playing in 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 in, in, in League Two. So that's where uh, he signed with. Um he signed a two and a half years deal, but the deal is not yet yet finalized. Uh, the deal is signed, but it's not yet finalized. It depends on international clearance and visa approval. So if all those things are settled, and usually those things will be settled, of course, uh, international clearance and visa visa approval, and then he can join his his new club. Currently, according to four, he's still in Denmark waiting for approval of that and the visa before he moved. At Viborg, he was really decent. He also was a player who struggled a, a little bit with injury. A lot, I would say, not a little bit. He struggled with injury a lot. Um, he played 106 games for Viborg and scored 20. 21 goals, which is not, which is a respectable number. You know, his final, his last goal was against Copenhagen, one of the bigger clubs in in in, in one of the biggest club in 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 um, uh, in, in in Denmark. There, um, like this season, we see what they did in the Champions League. They knocked out Manchester United. <laughs> they were in the same group with them. So yeah, Copenhagen. That was his final, final last goal that he scored. And uh, yeah, he's one of my 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 my, my, my brother's players. That is uh, Mundo Bi. Yeah. So yeah, I'm happy. I, I that's why these days my brother is, is quite busy. But I, I cannot <laughs> I cannot get hold of him. I'm sure he has been working on the um Tambiedu too was one of his players. So most of these like young players, um they are they, they are under him. There was some I, I think there at some point James was under him at some point, but of course not now. Um, you know. So yeah. But hopefully now he will be a little less busy, then now you know. I I I, I will go and find him again. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Alasana is a quite interesting player. I can't remember when 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 really really Abraham because Alasana used to play at Real de Banjo as well, the, one of the biggest clubs in Gambia football. If not, they will say they are the biggest, but I think Walidan, you know, they get that. But where Real is Real is also Real is they are the biggest rivals to Walidan. But anyways, they are they are the defending champions of the of the Gambian League. So their president, really, he came to the platform and then we were discussing about, you know, overall the club, the history and stuff like that. We also discussed about Alasana. And, um, yeah, he the one thing he said about Alasana was that he's one of the, you know, most straightforward or one of the most honest players that he has ever worked with, which is a big, big statement for a club president to say. And, um, you know, so that means how what good, how good uh, this this person is, Alasana. So anytime I, I, I talk about him, I used to, I like to mention that. 
So, yeah, I, I wish him all the best moving to England, not County. And um, hopefully the injuries will, you know, one out and then, you know, he can get a rhythm and then playing. Um, our Gambian players, to be honest, uh, people keep saying these kind of things because of the pitches we have back home. If the players play in the in the country, then they have these injuries. Then it, it, it kind of go with their, like yeah, it's not nothing scientific to to bag that as the truth. But uh, like you cannot d deny that the pitches back home is having some impl so, so 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 some impact on the players we have going abroad. Yeah, and other players that. That that I've made moves where Adam Akante he terminated his his deal with uh Huesca uh in the Spanish second division four they reported that um four believes that he will be going to 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 Malaga and four so reported that Mo Fall uh move from uh move from uh move to Maidstone from Haven and Water Waterlooville uh the Mo Fall the other the other striker. So yeah, both more fast actually made moves because we already spoke about more fast. And then in the injury front, um, there was some 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 some, some not so great news on on regarding Abdullah Jalla. I think we expected that in, during the African Cup of Nations, you know, the final game, he got that uh, uh, um hamstring injury, that hamstring injury when we play against Cameroon after he scored a brilliant goal against against Cameroon. Um, so his coach said that he will be out for a few weeks. Uh, several weeks so and several like how do you interpret several is it um several it has to be at least at least three four weeks i i would say at least three four weeks because if he says several um he did not say specifically say the number but yeah that is it um yeah that was that was the midweek recap guys uh we covered some of the players who played we covered some of the transfers that that, that occurred during this period um during the end of the transfer window and i also look at the like some of the injuries yeah let us know your thoughts in the in the comment section guys um, um which move um what do you think of these moves what do you think of the players who make these moves how do you see them um do, are they do you agree with the like do, do you think they are good moves for these players yeah for me we, like most of them make sense except the Brahma Dabo one but um uh, i think um yeah it should be interesting to see how they go but we will keep monitoring them and then see how how they do so let us know guys in the comment section which we what 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 was interesting for you and if you enjoyed the video please make sure to hit the like and um subscribe to the Jello football banter by youtube channel yeah and um yeah until we come again your way guys goodbye